Good morning. Over the past year, China has put several critical materials on export ban lists, in particular those that have a dual-use purpose. Dual-use means that they have both civilian and military applications. They began with gallium, germanium, and antimony. When this article was published, supply chain managers were already having serious problems sourcing those, and prices went straight up. Now there are concerns that more will be added. Tungsten, we've highlighted in red because China announced an export ban on tungsten last week. Let's look now at what a similar ban on titanium, which is likely coming, would do. Titanium is yet another metal crucial to weapons systems and aviation. And the dual use aspects of titanium are intriguing for another reason. Titanium is a very important metal for the production of industrial robots. Goes without saying that China's military wouldn't care to see their titanium being used to build military grade robots in other countries. But industrial robots installed in North America and Europe would undermine China's factory sector. Our policymakers know that the only way to reshore production back to the United States or Western Europe is by automating our factories, because only that has a chance to be cost competitive against Chinese industry. But we need a lot of titanium to build robots in our markets, and China and the other BRICs have the titanium. Russia has already floated the idea of a titanium ban last year, along with some other metals that also show up on that list we were worried about in the beginning. And the announcement that they were even thinking about it scrambled the market and got supply chain analysts busy working out the numbers. Just one Russian company, VSMPO of Visma, produces 15% of the world's titanium sponge. More than half the world's sponge comes from China, about 25% from Japan, and 10% from Kazakhstan. Just that paragraph alone should be enough to cause titanium buyers to worry. Russia, China, and Kazakhstan are friendly countries, with each other, I mean. And together, they make up more than three-fourths of the world's supply of titanium sponge, with Japan providing the rest. So the focus then shifts to Japan, which sounds like a good plan B in case Russia, China, and Kazakhstan cut us off. Nikkei Asia is a Tokyo paper. And this features how Japanese producers are positioning themselves as reliable sources. Japan takes titanium ores and converts them into titanium sponge. Japanese titanium sponge production has increased by a fifth since 2021. And Japan is now the second largest producer of titanium sponge. But there is a big problem, which is that Japan doesn't have titanium ores. Japan imports the titanium ore, which it then turns into titanium sponge. In 2023, Japan was the world's second largest importer of titanium ores. The takeaway here is that an export ban of titanium ore puts much of the Japanese titanium sponge industry out of business until new sources of ore can be found. Consider this too. In 2023, Asia Pacific was most of the end user market for the world's titanium. China and India alone take more than half of it for their own markets. Titanium is vital in construction, aerospace, automotive, and here is where most of that consumption is. China is also by far the number one miner of ilmenite, 3.4 million tons, which is three times higher than Mozambique, which is at number two. So that's a natural next question. Maybe Mozambique is a plan B for the titanium ores, but we bump into China there too, and their belt and road investments in Mozambique. China built the longest suspension bridge in Africa, in Mozambique, which shaved 100 miles off road travel between the capital and Katembe. That ran $786 million. And in 2014, Chinese companies ramped up heavy investments in Mozambique to produce 1 million tons per year of ilmenite there and ship it to China for the next 25 years for processing. So here's a quick update on how that's going. In one month, April 2024, China imported 328,000 tons of titanium ore. 
Mozambique was 143,000 tons of that. Norway, oh look, one of our friends made the list. Norway, 35,000 tons. Mozambique is four Norways, in other words. Vietnam at 32,000 tons. In addition to China being the biggest miner of the ore, it's also the biggest importer of it. And we should probably assume that Mozambique is happy with this relationship and they like having the biggest bridge in Africa. Besides aviation and automotive and construction and defense, manufacturers are looking to titanium to build robotics. This analysis explores the reasons titanium is the most preferred metal for making robots. Strength, elasticity, biocompatibility, it's lightweight, highly resistant to corrosion, low thermal conductivity, absorbs sound waves, high machine ability. Titanium allows robots to operate in very hot environments, electrical insulation properties, protection against static electricity, low cost, look for that one to go away on day one of an export ban, high strength to weight ratio, recyclability. There's some good news. We can probably find some in our junkyards. But China is rapidly building out its own domestic robotics industry. China has the highest adoption rate in the world. But China is not building robots to replace Chinese blue collar labor or Chinese factory jobs. They're building robots to replace American and European factory jobs. The International Federation of Robotics points out here that even though China is building a lot of robots and they're doing so at far lower cost, they're exporting basically none of them except those that go to Chinese owned factories around the world. Western companies are not supposed to be buying titanium from Russia anyway. But suppliers to Airbus get waivers from the restriction because without the titanium, our aircraft cannot get built or repaired. That's to say we put our own ban on the import of Russian titanium, but our own companies design workarounds so they can get it anyway. There is simply no good alternative for titanium in aviation. And there is simply no good alternative to titanium in robotics. And given the export bans that we've already seen, in those other metals, which have broad applications across military and industrial sectors, we should get ready for one on titanium. This is Foshan, Guangdong province. Be good. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Father, thank you for this precious word who has come. Thank you for making our name integrity and honor for you. Thank you for making your blood. Show us people 